10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Gridiron Expert. It is finally prediction season, and I hope you guys are just as happy as I am to get the ball rolling once again. From now until the beginning of the college football season, we will be giving you our game-by-game -game predictions for every single Power 5 team, and then for our group of five teams, we will be sharing our projected records and conference recaps. And as you can see, I couldn't think of any way better to kick things off than with the reigning national champions, the Clemson Tigers. That is who we're going to start off with. The ACC is the conference we will begin with in 2019. And as you can see, we've already taken the liberty of giving Clemson two automatic wins over Charlotte and Wofford. Now, Clemson, as I just mentioned, is the reigning national champions, winning that national title 44-16 to over the mighty Alabama Crimson Tide and Nick Saban. And what's scary is that the Clemson could be even better in 2019. They returned arguably the best quarterback in all of college football in Trevor Lawrence, who threw for 30 touchdowns and just four interceptions last year as a freshman. They returned Travis Etienne, one of the better running backs in the entire ACC, rushed for over 1,600 yards last year, and returned arguably the best wide receiver core in the entire nation with T. Higgins, Amari Rogers, and Justin Ross, who had a breakout season as a freshman last year. These guys combined, this offense combined, averaged 44.2 points per game last season, and is going to be extremely difficult for any defense to stop these guys. Now, the defense could have a couple questions. Dabo Sweeney had built up such a solid defensive line last year. Cleveland Farrell, Christian Wilkins, and Dexter Lawrence all off to the NFL, and now they have to find a way to replace these star-studded and future NFL stars. Now, the problem is they only returned four starters on the defensive side of the ball, and that's just fine. Dabo Sweeney did a phenomenal job cycling players through last year, getting people experience because he knew this was going to happen. Three of those four returning starters are in the secondary with A.J. Terrell, Kayvon Wallace, and Tanner Muse. So the secondary obviously going to be a strength for the Clemson Tigers. The defensive line might, might have some questions, but I'm not too worried about it. So we're going to kick things off here with Clemson opening the season in ACC play with the Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets who were under new management and Jeff Collins coming over from Temple. And not only under their new management, but they also have a brand new offensive scheme. Georgia Tech, for years under Paul Johnson, was going under the option. Jeff Collins is coming in here and transferring that offense to more pro style. They're going to throw the ball a lot more. They're going to take snaps out of the shotgun. This is something that we have not seen out of Georgia Tech in a very, very long time. They open the season on a Thursday night in Death Valley, and I do believe that Clemson gets the win here. It's a horrible way for Jeff Collins to open up his tenure with the Yellow Jackets going up against a very talented Clemson team, but this is a phenomenal way also for Georgia Tech to see what they're made of. They can put some points on this Clemson team and hang with them for maybe a half or three quarters. Maybe the future might not be looking too bleak for the Yellow Jackets. And then they get a little bit of a break there because they have a Thursday night game against Georgia Tech. They get a couple extra days of rest before they face off against Texas A&M, a team that nearly upset Clemson last year in College Station. Now, this is a Texas A&M team led by Jimbo Fisher and led by a phenomenal quarterback in Kellen Mond, one of my top five quarterbacks in the SEC. Last year's meeting was a 28-26 victory for the Tigers in College Station. Texas A&M failing a two-point conversion with under a minute left that prevented them from potentially pulling off the major upset. This year, if the game had actually been in College Station, I would be more inclined to possibly pick the Aggies for the upset. But Clemson gets to host this game in Death Valley, which is huge for them. And you know how big I am on home field advantage. I think Clemson escapes with a win against Texas A&M. The early spread is Clemson by 17. I believe that's a little too high. I think the Aggies hang with them. Jimbo Fisher has experience playing against Clemson and Dabo Sweeney as he was the previous head coach at Florida State. But Clemson gets a big-time win in the non-conference against Texas A&M. And then... A week later, week three, the trendy upset pick for everybody is Clemson going on the road to the Carrier Dome at Syracuse. Syracuse, a team 
that has given Clemson a battle the past two years. Actually defeated the Tigers two years ago at the Carrier Dome, and last year should have won that game, losing in the final minute, 27-23. to And of course, that was when Trevor Lawrence went down with an injury. Chase Bryce had to come in and save the day for the Tigers, and Travis Etienne had to pick up a lot of slack too. But Syracuse, despite losing Eric Dungy, despite losing some other offensive stars, is still going to be a very dangerous threat in the ACC, and is probably the biggest threat to Clemson in their division, the Atlantic division. Nonetheless, though, I think Clemson goes on the road and gets a huge win against Syracuse. I know it's the Orange's homecoming. I know there's a lot of hype surrounding the Syracuse team. I don't think they're going to be able to replicate that 10-win season they had last year, but this is probably going to be the toughest test for Clemson in the regular season, at least in ACC play, but they will be able to go on the road and pick up a key win there. We obviously said they get a win against Charlotte, and then on September 28th, to round out the month of September, they go on the road to North Carolina, who also was under new management with Matt Brown, the legendary head coach from Texas, who also previously coached at North Carolina many, many years ago. And his first two years at North Carolina were absolutely horrible. He went 2-20 uh, in those two years combined. I don't think he's going to have a very solid year in year one with the Tar Heels this year either. Even though it's on the road, Clemson should take very easy care of North Carolina as they are also having to deal with many changes both on the offensive side of the ball and the defensive side of the ball. Yes, they had a bunch of injuries the past couple years. Yes, their 2-9 and record last year uh, did not indicate how good that North Carolina team was. They had a lot of close losses, but Clemson will easily take care of the Tar Heels and that will improve them to 5-0 and going into a bye week before a big-time day against Florida State, who many believe, may, if it's not going to be Syracuse, will probably be Clemson's biggest threat in the Atlantic Division. And here's what I have to say about that. Florida State last year went 5-7 and in Willie Taggart's first year at the helm, and it was an embarrassing year, and a lot of people were immediately calling for Willie Taggart's head. They wanted him out of Tallahassee, and I thought that was a little too quick. This year, you can expect some major strides forward from Florida State. They returned 16 starters. They will finally have a competent quarterback, whether it's Alex Hornerbrook or whether it's James Blackman. My money would be on Blackman. They also have Cam Akers, a solid running back who rushed for a little over 700 yards and could have been better had Florida State's offensive line been a little bit healthy. But this team overall is a much deeper team than they were last year, a much more experienced team than they were last year, and Willie Taggart desperately needs a big-time year. Unfortunately, this game will be in Death Valley. Clemson will be fresh off a bye week. Florida State will not lose by 49 like they did last year, but they will not have enough to beat the Tigers. Clemson improves to 6-0. On the road against Louisville, a team that Clemson dropped 77 points on last season. Uh, there's no way that they, I don't believe there's any way they can replicate that, especially with Louisville returning 10 stars on the defensive side of the ball. But like Georgia Tech, like North Carolina, Louisville has a brand new head coach in Scott Satterfield coming over from Appalachian State. This Louisville team is going to take a lot of work, and I think Satterfield has his work cut out for him. They're not going to be able to get, I think, more than five wins in year one at Louisville. Clemson should be able to go on the road easily and take care of this Louisville team that, yes, is experienced on the defensive side of the ball, but offensively still has a lot of work cut out for them. Yes, the wide receiver core is fine, but they need a competent quarterback to get them the ball, and I don't know if Juwan Pass is the right man for that job. Clemson doesn't drop 77 this time, but does take easy care of the Cardinals. The very next week, they go, they go back home to Death Valley to take on Boston College. Now, Boston College was one of the few teams in the ACC last year, outside of Syracuse really, that gave uh, Clemson a respectable fight. Boston College hosted College Game Day when they faced off against the Tigers last year and only lost 27-7. to And Keep in mind, they lost their quarterback, Anthony Brown, fairly early on in that game. This year, had it been in Boston College, I'm not saying I would have picked the Eagles, but maybe you could expect... Uh, a closer showing, especially with Boston College flipping the script, usually known for having a solid defense under Steve Adazio. This year should have a strong offense led by Anthony Brown at quarterback and A.J. Dillon at running back. But this game is in Death Valley. While Boston College's deep offense should be enough to put up some points against Clemson, they're not going to have enough defensively to shut down the Tigers, especially not in Death Valley. Another win for Clemson, and that would make it what would that be? Four in a row after the bye week, including that win over Wofford. They have three games remaining in the season. They go on the road to North Carolina State, a team that many believed was going to be a big challenge to Clemson last year, maybe even two seasons ago. And keep in mind, the last time here, the last time Clemson played at North Carolina State, which was two years ago, they only won by seven points. 
Back in 2016, North Carolina State came into Death Valley and took Clemson all the way to overtime before losing in devastating fashion. Last year, though, with a better North Carolina State team than they will be this year, Clemson won 41-7. to North Carolina State loses their star quarterback in Ryan Finley. The offense is going to have some key uh, people they're going to have to replace. While they will be in uh, November at this point, I would expect the offense to be gelling and fixing any problems they have. But Clemson should have no issues whatsoever at North Carolina State. It will not be a seven-point game like it was two years ago. Clemson gets another huge win in conference play. And by this point, surely has wrapped up a spot in the ACC title game, assuming Syracuse or Florida State is not a one-loss team at this time. They get Wake Forest back at home. Last year, they annihilated the Demon Deacons, winning by 60 points. Keep in mind, this team scored 44.2 points per game and were outscoring opponents, I think, down the stretch by 30 points per game, I think, over their last six games or something like that. So Wake Forest here, while they do have another big-time quarterback coming back in Jamie Newman, and I give so much respect to Dave Clawson and what he has done with his Demon Deacons program, they're not going to have enough to come on the road and defeat uh, the, the Clemson Tigers. There's no way. No, I don't see anybody coming in to Death Valley and taking care of Clemson this year. People have done it before. We've seen it happen. A few years ago, Pittsburgh did it, and no one saw that happening. Wake Forest is not going to be that Pittsburgh from a few, years, a few years ago, and Clemson gets another win in conference play. A bye week before going into that big rivalry game against South Carolina, and this is the one game, uh, along with probably Texas A&M and Syracuse, where Clemson's defense is really going to have to step up. Last year, with a very solid defense, Clemson allowed 510 yards through the air. They allowed Jake Bentley to throw for 510 yards against them, and that was in Death Valley. The Tigers took easy care of the Gamecocks, allowed them to score quite a bit of points, but ended up blowing them out in the end. This year, it's at South Carolina. They're desperately hoping to get a win here. The Gamecocks are after losing five straight to Clemson, but unfortunately, it's not going to be enough. South Carolina has a veteran team. Jake Bentley is back but they have one of the most difficult schedules in the entire nation. With it being at home, I expect him to put up some solid points. With Jake Bentley playing in his final game as a Gamecock, I expect him to put up some solid numbers. But in the end, Clemson, once again, going to be too much. And they get a final win in the season to finish the year 12-0. and And is anybody really surprised by that? As I mentioned, one of the best offenses in the entire nation a defense that, yes, did lose quite a bit of talent, but Dabo Sweeney knows how to circle through his players and get them enough experience. With a 12-0 season, Clemson would have won 27 straight games going into the ACC title game. And if they can capture their second straight national title, it will be 30 straight wins to end the 2019 season. So here we are, Clemson, 12-0, our preseason number one team heading into 2019. And I can't wait to see how it all plays out for the best offense in the entire nation. So as always, guys, thank you for watching. Please continue to like, comment, and subscribe. And we will see you next time here on The Gridiron Expert.